Human beings are the only life on earth that has this incredible capacity to change the course of your life. No other life form can do that. Human beings can alter the course of their life. Human beings can live one way for five years, tear up that script, live a totally different way the next five years. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. Someone says, how did you do that? Here's number one, I discovered I was not a goose. Someone says, don't you have to do the second six years like you did the first six years and jot this down? No, no, you don't have to live the second six years like the first six. You can use all the information and all the advice and repairing all of your mistakes and adopting a new and refined philosophy so that the next six years can be totally different than the last six. No other life form can do this. But that's not true. Human beings can change location, go north, south, east, west, live here for a while, live somewhere else for a while. So that's a note to make. You can greatly alter the course of your life. Now here's the next note to make. Five years from now, you will arrive. The question is where? And I promise you, five years from now, you, you really don't want to arrive at an undesigned destination. Because you may very well wind up wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, living where you don't want to live, maybe doing what you don't want to do. Simply because you didn't design a better destination. Now, sometimes after we've lived a few years now to repair our mistakes and get back on track, seems like a tough job. But here's the key, and it's so exciting to talk to the teenagers. Make the note, if you start early, the fortune belongs to you. If you start early, all fortunes that are available to humans, if you start early, the promise looms large and the odds are heavy in your favor. Now, yes, it's possible to do some radical things starting late and still arrive with some good treasures and some good things. But when you haven't got that much time left, now sometimes the decision has to be so drastic people are not willing to make it and they're too tired and too weary and too ill and say, look, I don't have much time left. It's not going to happen for me anyway. It's easy to take that attitude. But everyone here, we've got the time over the next 10 years. We've got the time the next 20 years. We've got the time the next 30 years to make some repair now in our errors of the past and set up some new disciplines. And I'm telling you, that's going to change everything. Five years from now, I wish for you to arrive at a well-designed place, a place of productivity, a place that'll make you feel good about yourself, a place that'll give you honor and respect, a place that will give you influence to touch other people five years from now that you couldn't do today. Where will you be in five years? Key phrase, we go the direction we face. If you start designing something at the end of this direction, sure enough, you will start going the direction you face. Next phrase, direction determines destination. Destination is not determined by hope. It's not determined by wish. Destination is determined by direction. You cannot change destination overnight, which means you can't arrive at a five years from now place tomorrow. But here's what you can change today and overnight. You can change direction. And it is so fascinating what a little small change of direction will do. A few decisions in discipline, a few decisions in learning, a few decisions in change of behavior, change of habit, a few decisions in setting goals that you've sort of let drift before. Like I did at age 25, didn't have a list. I immediately started to change that. And I immediately started to change my direction. And here's where I would have been in five or six years. Maybe okay. You know, my kids probably wouldn't have been starving. And maybe, you know, we got clothes to wear and a place to live. But the joy of productivity and the joy of becoming valuable to the marketplace and more valuable to my family and valuable to my friends in my inner circle. All of that probably would have escaped me if I would have kept going this way. This had to happen and this had to happen and this door had to close and this door had to open. And all of those things for me to be here, for you to be here, I just didn't drop out of the sky, right? And you arrived here from all kinds of directions. Here we are. 
And so we just say, wow, part of that's a mystery and we let it be a mystery. We don't even try to figure it out. We just say, wow, it's incredible. But now that we're here, how could we collectively and individually affect each other's lives? It's by doing just what we've done. Study, learn, teach, shake hands, trade stories, and do all the stuff. So that we can help other people as well as ourselves to make that small journey to a new direction. So jot that down. It's only a small journey to a new direction. Come on, you don't have to radically do something. You can gain momentum and make changes as you go. Just start. Here's what happens when you start a new direction. Self-esteem starts to accelerate. It doesn't take much for you to feel good about yourself. Just commit it to a new direction and you feel good. That's how easy it is to change your life. You don't need some dramatic vision. Just begin something. And maybe by health or by whatever other things we can think of to do, you just get back on a better track, okay? It's a small journey. I met my teacher who helped turn my life around when I was 25, that's six years. At the end of the first six years of my economic life, I've got pennies in my pocket. I've got nothing in the bank. The creditors are calling saying, hey, you told us the check was in the mail. I'm embarrassed, I'm behind on my promises. I live in America, I'm 25 year old American male. I got a nice family, every reason to do well. And I'm messed up. Now what's messed up? I used to think it was the community that was messed up and the country was messed up and the government was messed up. If those Democrats ever get in the White House, that'll really mess things up. If the Republicans stay in power, that'll really mess things up. The economy was messed up, interest rates are messed up. I thought all this stuff was messed up. Then I found out that's not what was messed up. I was criticizing the only thing I had to work with. What was really messed up was my own personal philosophy. My own errors in judgment in my own personal philosophy brought me in six years to pennies in my pocket, nothing in the bank, and trying to explain why I wasn't doing well living in America, 25 year old American male, got a family, every reason to do well. Now, once I understood this, here's the formula for failure, errors in judgment, being lax about developing your own personal philosophy, telling you it's called accumulated disaster. Doesn't matter whether it's your health or your bank account. Guy's got an empty bank account, probably has high cholesterol. Why? Over the last six years, he never paid attention to either one. And it doesn't matter whether it's a dollar, or whether it's your money, or whether it's your cholesterol count. All you got to do is commit the errors, and just because disaster doesn't fall on you at the end of the first day that you don't eat an apple. You say, well, I didn't eat an apple today, and tonight I'm not ill. Well, you gotta be brighter than that. Someday you gotta leave first grade. Now let me give you the secret to success. Formula for failure, a few errors in judgment repeated every day for one month, starts the weakness, starts the disaster process. You can imagine what happens in six years. Now here's the formula for success. A few simple disciplines practiced every day. And you've started a whole new process called a whole new life. A few simple disciplines practiced every day. And if you decide today, to go for the apple instead of the Hershey bar. I'm telling you, you have begun the process of turning your life around. And if you keep up that process, not only with your health habits, but with your money habits and with your communication habits, with your sales habits and management habits and every other habit that you've got, if you'll start that process, eliminate the errors and replace it with disciplines practiced. I'm telling you, you can start this process of life change immediately. After today, you don't ever have to be the same again only by choice. You don't have to walk out of here the same as you walked in today. Only by choice. You can start a whole new process. And you say, well, Mr. Owen, is it that simple? Yes, it's that simple. Where else would you start but with an apple? You don't have to start with something staggering. What'll that do in six years? I'm telling you, the word is disaster. You could and you should and you don't. Here's an even stronger word. You won't. I mean, don't might mean you're careless won't probably means you're stubborn and either one's called disaster could should don't i'm telling you that's why at the end of six years i found myself with pennies in my pocket nothing in the bank creditors calling could should won't could should don't is called disaster somebody says well what did you go to work on to do all that i started with my philosophy i started amending my errors by doing some better thinking changing my mind, coming up with ideas that I didn't have before I met my teacher. And once that whole process started for me, I'm telling you, I changed my whole life.
Within a six-year period, I was never the same. And I've kept up that process all these years. One of the reasons why I'm here is to continue my craft. I don't want the day to come someday. Somebody says, you should have heard Jim Rohn 10 years ago when he was really terrific. Guess what I want people to say? I heard him 10 years ago, but you should hear him now. I'm telling you the man works on his craft. I'm telling you the man's done some extra reading. I'm telling you the man doesn't miss a trick. I'm telling you he's worked hard on himself. That's why he's able to deliver like he does. Take advice, but not orders. Take information, but don't let somebody, you know, order your life. Make sure what you do is the product of your own conclusion. Excellent note to make. Make sure what you do is the product of your own conclusion. Not to do what someone else says. Take what someone else says, process it, think about it, ponder it. If it makes you wonder, if it makes you think, then it's valuable. Then when you go take action, make sure that the action is not what somebody told you to do. Make sure the action is the product of your own conclusion. If you'll follow just a little bit of those simple guidelines telling you the learning process can be speedy, swift, powerful. Your learning curve can go up and then applying it to your business, your life, your family, conversations, equities of all kinds. You'll find some progress like I did that first five years when I met a teacher willing to share with me, turn my life around. Progress I couldn't believe happened for me. Philosophy, as I taught the last time I was here, philosophy, in my personal opinion, is the major determining factor in how your life works out. Philosophy, the major determining factor in how your life works out. Philosophy, to form our philosophy, you got to think, you got to use your mind, you got to process ideas. And this whole process over a lifetime, starting way back here when we were children, schools that we've attended, our parents, our experiences, all this stuff that we've processed by the thinking process helps to develop our philosophy. And in my opinion, each person's personal philosophy is the major factor in how your life works out. How do you turn all this stuff that's available here into equity and promise and lifestyle and dreams and future possibilities all of this that's possible now with human beings how do you take all this stuff and turn it into this equities and values well it starts with philosophy so the seed and the soil and the rain and the sunshine this is called you know the economy and the banks and the money and the schools and uh, everything that's available out there processing information what to do with all that and turn it into equity and value that is the major challenge of life my personal opinion what is the seed what is the soil what is the sunshine what is the rain is it possible to take some of each of all the stuff that's available and turn it into food and turn it into value and turn it into nourishment turn it into something spectacular and unique that no other life form can do and the answer is yes but you cannot deal with all this stuff and what to do with it unless you start refining your philosophy. Think, use your mind, come up with ideas, and strengthen your philosophy. Promise yourself you'll read the books until your skills change. Go to the seminars until you get a handle on it. Do it until it makes sense. Practice it until you've got it right. Don't give up until you get where you want to be, however long that is. Step by step, piece by piece, book by book, seminar by seminar, do it until, go for it. Until is a very important word, it's magic. It means that you'll never give up. Don't miss the chance to grow, to pay the price, until you learn, change, grow. You'll discover some of life's great treasures when you pay that price. As long as you're working toward your inner goal, your dream, then success is possible. But once you give up your inner vision, then you can never become successful. You never will become successful. Until doesn't even matter. Now, maybe the person who's been working on a project for 10 years can be successful in his own right. If he's honestly working toward it. Doing everything to make himself worthy of reaching the dream really happy with where he is, doing it until. Then maybe he is a success. It's a personal thing. Going for it one step at a time. Going for small accomplishments along the way for however long it takes. <laughs>